sitting here with the number one man in mad in the world. They don't hear you. I'm telling you what, all the NBA sports fans out there to play the video game. I'm standing with the number one man. Well, I'm gonna tell you that. YouTube, what's up? And you talk about an experience that was probably the best experience of my life that man has brought to me. Being able to stand on the red carpet, see some of the greatest NFL players ever over and over and over. I've taken pictures with all of them. Standing there, they all were gracious enough to take a picture, but Randy Moss was the one that really took a video, really started capping, really, you know, played me up like I was something special. And for that, Randy, I will always be a huge Randy Moss fan. That was super dope. And, and that's the greatest thing that man's done for me, be able to see that and see my, you know, NFL superstars that I grew up watching and grew up, you know, idolizing. And, and this game was a Randy Moss game. You know, he's the best wide receiver in the game. He's arguably the best wide receiver ever, certainly the most talented wide receiver ever. If you don't think Randy Moss is the best wide receiver ever, please comment below on who you think is the best wide receiver ever. Because obviously Jerry Rice, T.O., there's other names that get thrown in there. But, but for me... Randy Moss from mine, and you know, that was a pleasure to meet him and, and have him talk about me as a band player. And we're going to show you why he's on, should be on every team, he should be in every lineup, regardless salary cap or straight mutt. He needs to be on your field. And we go, we started off, he's running a little 335 odd, the crossfire, and we go hitting that mama there go that man, Randy Moss, making a person miss, getting 10 extra yards. Randy Moss is my best wide receiver, I put him in the slot. Any offensive defense you want to learn that you see here, hit the link below to Man Turf. You can get my New Orleans Saints ebook and my defensive guide, which is the Detroit Lions playbook. Also, you see I stream these games live. You can check them out on Twitch. My Twitch link is below as we hit a little dot over there to Philip Dorsett. Philip Dorsett is my weakness on this team, but speaking of weakness, that's not one. Randy Moss with his first touchdown of the game. Let's keep track of how many touchdowns Randy Moss has in the slot. I've, I say this all the time about putting my best wide receiver in the slot, and that's what we do with Randy Moss. He goes, he's running bunch tight end. I have a lot of experience against bunch tight end because I play Bugs a lot, and he runs probably the best one in the nation right now. There we go, screaming at him, Darius Slay. And here we go with a slight bait back down the slant, pop back out to the corner route. I do that as third and 13. I know that I had no flat zone over there, so that's my responsibility. So the worst case scenario, I let him throw a drag underneath. So I got to take away that corner route. I was going to do that from the beginning of the snap. There's Moss again. Doesn't hold on to that one. That's a lot of traffic right there. The next play we come down, we can hit Gurley. We get a good animation. We actually pick up seven yards. That was a late read on that flat route. And we hit, we hit it anyway. Here I go. Phil Dorsett on a slant. Patrick Peterson bags him. I told you, that's the weakness of my receiving core. That's where I'm trying to save a little bit of cap. It's Philip Dorsett instead of that T.Y. Hilton. You guys see me ran that T.Y. Hilton's probably 54 cap. Dorsett is, you know, 27. And here I get burnt. For some reason, Milton is in my deep blue. Milton is the 10 cap DB that a lot of people use because he's fast. And I give up a bomb right there. Nice cover three beater. Never think of tight end, especially uh, in mud is fast enough to do that. But Vernon Davis is going to be one that's going to be Vernon Davis. That's who got me. So I give up a big touchdown. I hate that. Still up three points with the ball. Got to go down and make just two scores. Here we go. We oh, use the playmaker, bring his user down, and hit Phil Dorsett. I mean, he can get open. He can fly. I'll tell you that much. But, I mean, beating man covers and beating physical play is really not a strong suit. But there we go. We hit him underneath again. He can spin. He has the good spin move. Hit him here again. Dorsett on the curl route. As long as it's zone, I think he's great. Man-to-man, -man, he doesn't really kill it that much. Have you seen man-to-man? -man, I was afraid to do the out route. Two door set in that man coverage. We go ahead and get to a, a well, there he goes. Mama with a man, Randy Moss, second and ten. Now we are inside the ten yard line. It is time to find that man, Randy. One hand on Micah Hyde. That's his second touchdown of the game. Boom. Two touchdowns from Randy Moss being in the slot. That one I pretty much just threw high and let my player make a play. And speaking of players making a play, Jalen Ramsey, I need you to make a play on that one. We're up 10 points. Let's go ahead and get a stop. And there it is, Patrick Peterson. Throws a little quick out, quick uh, slant right there. I tried to click on a strip with Pat P, and I got a bad animation. He spun out and got a lot of yards. That's a big play I just gave up. Another one, too. Amos, I went for a pick underneath, and he wasn't able to grab it. And what was that? I think it's Emmanuel Sanders makes a good play. I run commit here. He doesn't have time to go ahead and throw that route. I'm up 10 here. 
He's trying to throw this cute little wheel route to the running back with an out route, and, and you'll see this come into play uh, a lot throughout the game here when he gets inside the uh, five. And this this is the first time it beat me. First time I saw that really beat me. And when you get beat by something, you have to keep it in the back of your head for the rest of the game because you know that's what he wants to go to. He ran that same setup all three plays inside the 10-yard line there. There it is. I talk him. Philip Dorsett able to hit the slant there, get a block from Randy Moss. Randy Moss is playing his lights out. Catching the ball, blocking the ball. I might have to put him in the backfield, give him a couple runs. There it is, Dorsett holding on to the ball there. Dorsett, I mean, from, from my weakness on offense, he's certainly touching the ball a lot. Uh, Michael Vick is never a weakness on offense. We go ahead and get inside the 10 here. We got a little bit of time that Dorsett drops that one. We're going to go ahead and try to look for Moss again, and I throw a pick six throwing that flat route. It was a bad read. I read the inside guys. I didn't think it was covered two. Did not read the corner. He put the corner in a hard flat. Really caught me sleeping there. Caught a pick. Glad I tackled him. Huge tackle there. Rally. I, I would assume that's probably Moss that came back and tackled him. Or Dorsett, my other superstar. But there, it was a huge tackle. I swore when I do that, it was a pick six and I was going to be in a hole. But we were able to tackle. That's one reason you got to love Michael Vick. I talk about why Michael Vick is great. One of the reasons why is, I mean, if you throw a pick, it's hard to make it a pick six because he will get back and make a play. At least make him swerve around like he did there and let somebody else come and make the tackle. But I'm up three points at halftime. I feel good. I feel okay. Bunch tight end. I'm, I'm comfortable defending it. I know the route combinations. I know my responsibilities. Also, he's running crossfire. I mean, it's just nation defense. I feel good and comfortable against it. No big plays. Can't give up that bomb to Vernon Davis again. And got to tackle better, pretty much, is what I'm thinking in this second half because that one big play was all because of tackling. Jalen Ramsey. He tries to get greedy, throw the corner. This is a play that Bugs runs, too. It's a little... The slant will take take the cloud flat, and people get greedy and try to fit that over the cloud flat. Jalen Ramsey grabs it. High ball to Todd Gurley. So now we're in Moss zone right here. I think it is. We're going to run a little four verts. cover two. Throw it up in just one hand for everybody. Randy Moss, his third touchdown of the game. Three touchdowns from the slot from Randy Moss. And we go up 10 points. 10-point lead in the second half. And you're feeling good, comfortable. I'm okay. No big plays. Bang, I oh, more gotta go come around and grab that. But he actually holds on to I think that's Emmanuel Sanders again. I was interested in, in the uh team of the week, Emmanuel Sanders, because he does have the spin and he's playing really well for this guy. Let me see Troy Abbey. I send the dogs that play. Really get after him, keep him unbalanced, get to a third and long, send the dogs again. More making the sack now. Now we get him in the fourth and forever, and he punts the ball. So now I just want to take some time off the clock. Hopefully get to the fourth quarter here with this drive. Mix up my routes a little bit. Oh, but hit Randy Moss along the sideline there. There it is. Dorsett and man coverage. I'm waiting for him to get off the press. I saw the coverage. He just didn't, never got off the press. And Pat Pete jumps in front of him and picks it off. So there he goes. Instead of being greedy, he hits the flat. But Ramsey rallies and holds it to a three-yard gain. Apke, I need you to jump in front of that. But he's a 50, cat, or a 50 overall, 10 awareness guy. So don't expect him to do too much there. There is Emmanuel Sanders, playmaker, spin. I mean, he's not the fastest, but he's certainly agile. And he's certain, if you have that spin, you can make up for a lot of things. So we do get to the fourth. Me being up 10 points, I just want to run some clock here. Hopefully, you can't let him score before the two-minute warning. That's where I'm at. So I'm perfectly fine with these little seven-yard gains. That's okay. It's not killing me. Once again, another one, a little eight-yard gain. All I want, time off the clock is crucial for me right now. He runs again. And some inside the 15-yard line. Just got to hold my water. And he actually holds on to this pass here. Apke again getting thrown in, as he should. And here goes back to that play. That play with the wheel route and the speed out. I run cover two hard flats. He gets sacked right there. Terrible sack by him. Wastes tons of time. He comes out, kicks the field goal. You know, if he throws the ball away, it saves him 15, 20 seconds right there. So I'm getting the ball. And, I mean, this is a situation that we all find ourselves in a Madden. We're up in possession. We're getting the ball. We need to make him use his timeouts. We need to end the game right here. The worst case scenario is I will be giving him the ball back with no timeouts. I'm still up seven points, so no matter what happens in this minute and 27, I, I should at least make it to overtime. So I just want to make it as hard as possible for him to score a touchdown. You know, you want to expect the best, but you always have to prepare for the worst. And the worst case scenario, obviously, is a turnover. But the, out of things I can control, the worst case is that I'll be punting him the ball. So if I'm going to prepare for the worst, then I need to make sure that I make him use his timeouts. That was my main priority in this drive right here. I need to take all three of those timeouts, and if I punt on the ball, I punt on the ball. Here I see a little pressure from the left, so I'm going to block Gurley. 
I should hit Tevin Coleman early and get a couple yards, but I don't. It's covered two. I'm boxed. I run away. Instead of throwing the ball away, I slide. Now, I lose seven yards, but I make him use a timeout. So let's go back to the, the, the idea that I want to make sure he uses all three of his timeouts. So if I punt him the ball, he's going to be in panic mode and he can't stop the clock. So right there, after that play, I'm pretty much conceding the fact I'm going to punt the ball. We'll see how many yards I can get if I can go ahead and, and throw a couple dots. You know, I don't want an incomplete pass. That's pretty much the number one thing I do not want. So this kind of looks like the same setup. It looks like a little pressure over the left. So once again, I want to block Gurley. Same setup, really, that I want to run. But this time, if it's open, I want to take Tevin Coleman, get a couple yards, spin move. I wish I could have got that other spin off, but I got my seven yards back. Uses another timeout. So now i got a third and ten. Once again, I, I want a completion. I want the clock running. I want to use that last timeout. I will punt him the ball if I need to. Because, I mean, if he's going to go down the field with a minute and no timeouts, then that's my fault defensively. So, I'm going to look for a little dot here. I got Gurley in the flat. I'm maybe Moss on the out route or the backside in, or in route or a post the door set. I had Gurley. I didn't want to take it on third and ten, but I'll come back and take it when the pressure's on me. Able to get six yards. Use that last timeout. And you know what I say? Fourth and four. Let me come out and see what it looks like. You know, if I get the right look, I'll go for it. I can have a flat route. I think with Gurley, a flat route can pick up the first down with, if he plays back, if he plays cloud flats. I can also go ahead and throw curls and be able to get this fourth and four. Fourth and four is kind of, I want to say a little no man's land. It's a tough spot because a cloud flat could stop your drag or could stop your, your flat route. But what I see is the same thing. I see a little pressure over here on the left. We're going to go just with the base setup that I run for the most part. Like I said, all these setups on what, what hash to run and when to run them is in the uh, New Orleans ebook in the link below. But I got a fourth and four. He runs man, man blitz everybody, and I find that man again. I identified it right away. It was man blitz. He had the, the, the free safety cross man on Randy Moss. And we know even a straight man is not going to get it done on Randy Moss. I identified that right away. That's why I keep Randy Moss on the fade in that play because I can lead it to the right side away from that man cover safety. And Randy Moss ends the game for me. He scored all three touchdowns, ends the game. And like I said, for me, Randy Moss is the best wide receiver ever. If you disagree, please put in the comments below who you think is better than Randy Moss. Also, like I said, all the ebooks are below. Hit that link. Watch the Twitch live. Hit that link. If you want to play for money, if your game's getting tough, because I feel like I'm tough, but if your game's getting tough, make sure you check out Players Lounge. That link is below. You can go ahead and, and deposit 10 bucks and go play for $5, play for $3. You can deposit 1000 bucks and go play for $100 a game. Whatever you want to do. For me, it's always more enjoyable playing good people, playing high competition, not, you know, mutt leaderboards or weekend league and stuff like that because those guys really won't make you the best. You know, you're only as good as the competition you play. That's how I feel about Madden. But it's pretty much is what it's about, man. Like I said, I identified man blitz right away. Right away when I looked at the right and saw that, that linebacker blitz and then saw his free safety shoot to the right, I knew he was manned up. And I knew I had Randy Moss. I got to step on him. Can lob that thing up to Mr. Moss, the best wide receiver ever. And that's what it was about. Check back more. Please hit the like button. 